Many of you know Janet Dafo, a very accomplished woman in her own right. Janet, Daf Janet Dafo uh, received her PhD and postdoctoral training in psychology at Stanford University. She worked as a staff psychologist at the Children's Health Council for 20 years, and she now works as a clinical psychologist and is a proud mother of, Win of Whitney Dafo and Ashley Davis. Janet and I share a special bond as we both know how devastating this illness has been for our children and for our families and for our lives. Tonight she's here to share her story. Thank you. Janet? My slide projector here. <laughs> okay. So this is our son, Whitney Dafo. Hold it high. Uh, he is. A, he was an incredibly vibrant, um, sensitive, creative a wonderful person who loved life. He uh, was in college uh, doing uh, um, fine arts photography and he was winning awards and he was traveling the world taking pictures and entering contests and um, being in judged shows and uh, to make money he was photographing brides um, and they voted him th th his, their favorite photographer at the place he worked. Um, which doesn't surprise me because he's just a wonderful, sensitive person. And he, this is a picture of him in the Himalayas um, uh, before he was sick. Um, and, you know, some people say that, um, that people who have, that these symptoms are depression or people who want to withdraw from the world or they just want a disability check. Well, I can just tell you that is not true. Whitney had no desire to withdraw from the world. He was loving the world and he was just getting really independent from us, which was great for him, and that's always hard for the parents, but we were celebrating that, of course. And um, so the next picture, there's a picture of him in the Himalayas, waving to all of you, being grateful to be here to help him and the other patients. Very vibrant young man. And then this is a picture of him in Canyon de Chez um, with his whatever kind of camera that is, <laughs> uh, um, have taking wonderful pictures of the Navajo people. And um, if you look on his website, you'll see some of his wonderful pictures where he um, gets the essence of a person in the picture. Um, I think he might have been planning to do a book of portraits because he was very talented at um, portraying people. Um, this is a picture, now this is an invisible illness because people, I mean, look at Deborah Rose. She's got this illness and she looks fine, right? You look great, Deborah, <laughs> right? And she's got CFS. So she's probably gonna go home and be really tired for like weeks from coming here. And, that, and so these people go to the doctor and the doctor says they look great, their tests come out normal, you must need a psychiatrist which just happened to us at Stanford last week um, for somebody who only had seen, known us for five minutes. Um, so Ron and I are starting to call that malpractice because that's what that is in my view. Um, but that's so he can go out there and look all happy and he's got CFS. Um, he gets really tired. He's laying in the grass as you can see. Um, this is a picture, I love this picture, it made me cry when I saw it blown up. Um, he was really sick in this picture. Ashley was driving him to the doctor and he um, said, could we just drive by the beach? I love the beach. And so he got out for a minute and went, and she got his picture loving the beach. And then he got back in the car and collapsed in the back seat because he couldn't sit up anymore and went to the rest of, to the doctor and couldn't get out of the car to get into the doctor's appointment. So it, that's why they call it an invisible illness. Um, and you can imagine kids with this trying to deal with the school, saying they look fine, but they're actually so sick and they can't do their homework or anything. Um, this is another picture from the beach and how great he looks, but he's really quite ill in that picture. So he um, was busy um, doing his photography and he got so that he couldn't cook his own food anymore and he couldn't do the dishes and he couldn't take care of himself, so he moved home. Um, and uh, when he first moved home, 
I would chop up the food and he'd come in and cook it and then he couldn't do that anymore and he so uh, um, we cooked all his food for him and brought it to him and then he and I would go in and wash his hair and he'd <laughs> kneel on the floor in the um, shower because he, he couldn't wash his hair and then he couldn't get into the shower so I got this cool blow-up thing for washing hair which I thought was amazing that I found that but it was too hard on him so now he just we shave his head because we can't wash his hair anymore um, and this is what he looked like he got so that he couldn't eat anymore um, and he ate less and less and less and he's 6'3 he got down to 115 pounds and that's his doctor examining him seeing if there's any blockages or anything but there aren't any um, and we don't really know why it is he can't eat maybe something with the vagus nerve which I don't really I'm beyond my expertise saying that word even but um, so next one um, he has a pick line um, uh, which is a line that goes in your arm to deliver nutrition it's an IV nutrition and in order to do it the nurse has to come to our hospital and they have to bring an extra x-ray machine into the into our home uh, to make sure that the lines go into the right place because it goes up his arm above his heart and they have to get him to a higher table but he couldn't get out of bed to get to the higher massage table so Ashley's then boyfriend now fiance Teo um, with who is very strong and buff <laughs> um, came over and lifted him up onto the massage table and Ashley would hold his head and um, I got that picture of that that's Ron there helping move the pillow and then he also gets extremely anxious and I think it's part of the disease and has kind of panic attacks Deborah's nodding her head and that wasn't anything like he was before he was a very laid-back person but he gets very anxious and this is a picture of Ashley trying to help calm him down and we can't do that anymore we can't touch him she said worrying about an exam causes you to crash well Whitney's energy level is so low that if you touch him in an unexpected way it causes him to crash if I walk in there with letters on my shirt that he has to process it causes him to crash if you look at that video that Palo Alto Weekly made I have this stupid looking gray t-shirt on but that's because I can't wear any print run it to cover up his belt buckle is that the minor it's anything unexpected that we even move in his room causes him to crash get really low energy and and it doesn't come back up again ever really as high as it was and it takes weeks and weeks and months and really now he's so sensitive that it's impossible for him to not crash sometimes more than once a day and you know we're lucky if we get a week of being really really careful in his room so that he doesn't crash which is almost impossible because it doesn't take much oh this is a just a picture of me and my non-public favorite outfit fit <laughs> but whatever um, trying to calm him down when he was so anxious and then this is a picture occasionally a few months ago he was well enough that he would sit up and he put out his arms which meant he wanted to hug us and we couldn't talk we just hold each other and cry and this is the last time that he hugged his dad and that was several months ago because now we can't even have eye contact we can't touch him there's no hugging there's no smiles there's nothing um, the other night okay the other night I was in there with him and he just started crying and I started crying he's got a cap on so he can't see me and we were both crying but we're not really interacting exactly and I just thought look at this there's doctors who say that this is psychiatric and not real and there's NIH who won't fund it and it, the angst of that just about I don't know I just could barely stand it it's so wrong so we're very dedicated to turning that around and getting funding and getting the research done so that we know what this is and then doctors will know that it's real and they can get educated and treat people so that's our dream and we hope it happens in time for Whitney to benefit thank you
you so much for coming.